Hey everyone, Ben Brandt here back in the basement shop and tonight we're going to tackle a bit of a storage and organizational problem that I have with my dowel centers. Now if you've seen my recent video on the center finder that I made for my dowel centers, uh, I picked up a set of these dowel centers recently and while I won't be using them very often, I want to make sure I can find them and find the right sizes that I need when I need them easily. Um, but I don't have a great way to store and organize these things very well. Uh, the packaging didn't really give me much in that regard and just throwing them in a box doesn't work out very well either. Thus far I've just been keeping them in a little tray here but that's not a great long-term storage solution. They're all very similar in size so just look, trying to look through the box and quickly pick out the ones that you need is a little bit difficult and they're all just sort of floating around in there loose. Um, they're very small. I want to make sure I don't lose them easily. So if I can keep them all together, keep the like sizes together, and have some level of trust that they're not going to get lost, that would be great. Now since they are made of steel, I can use magnets to hold them in place. Recently I shared a idea <clears throat> that I had to solve this problem by 3D printing a little holder here with a hole for the dowel center and tiny magnets on two sides to hold it in place. So I can put it in the hole that fits its size, the magnets hold it there, and then when I need to get it, I can just push it out from the back side and it comes loose. After testing out this concept on small scale, I think it'll work out really well for a uh, solution for the whole set. We're going to take this design into Fusion 360 and design out something that will work for the entire set, 3D print a new holder for these things, add some magnets, and we'll see how it works out. So if you're not into the 3D modeling stuff, feel free to skip ahead to the end of the video and see how it turned out. Uh, but otherwise, uh, let's get into designing a solution to this problem. Okay, so here's a quick look at the first prototype idea that I had. As you can see here, I've got a couple cutouts here for the dowel center some pockets here for the little three millimeter diameter magnets to sit down inside and just a little bit of clearance here around the dowel center and that worked out pretty well so we're going to take that same concept and apply it to all of the dowel centers and make a holder for the whole set we'll start off making a new component here and before we even get into sketching, i got to set up a few parameters here. I've taken measurements of all of my dowel centers, and I want to put these in here as parameters so that if I change anything, it'll be easy for me to update my model if I need to make adjustments to make it fit better. So let's put in the various diameters for the four sizes of dowel centers. However, the holes for these things are actually going to be slightly larger here, so we're going to put in another parameter for the clearance around each dowel center. We'll call that clearance, and we'll say quarter of a millimeter. Click OK. And that way I'll have a consistent amount of clearance that I can reuse, and if I decide if I want to adjust it, it'll be really easy to adjust it by just changing it here in the parameter. And next we need another parameter here for the size of the magnet. And that should give me enough to work with to start building this model. So I want to arrange my dowel centers vertically and give it sort of a symmetrical design. So we'll start off by making a center line down the middle and start laying out all the holes that we're going to need. Now I've intentionally made these different sizes and now I'll just start throwing dimensions on them using the parameters that I've set up earlier. Let's fix those spelling errors first. So here I'm actually going to use the diameter plus the clearance. There we go. So it works out the diameter plus, I'm actually going to use uh, two times the clearance. I want that clearance on each side. 
copy that. And I just want this hole to be the same size. So rather than put that dimension in again, we're going to set those with an equals constraint so they're the same size. And we'll move on to the next dimension. Diameter B plus 2 times the clearance. Set those equal. Diameter C plus 2 times the clearance. Make those equal. Diameter D plus 2 times the clearance. Set those equal. Now I want them a little bit offset from the center because we need room for the, the caps of these to sit over top of the hole. So I'm going to offset this line, make it a construction line, and we're going to make that the magnet diameter, but half of that. Because we're going to imagine there's enough space for a magnet here. Even though we're not actually going to put a magnet there, um, that's the, the even sort of spacing that I want. And now to move these circles over. I want them all to be touching this line. And I can drag them in there and get them close, but we nearly need to put a constraint on them so they behave the way that I want them to. So first we're going to use tangent constraints to make these circles line up with this edge. I want to move this up. We're going to Anchor it to the top by making the center of this circle horizontal with the origin point. There, now that's locked into position. Now I want just enough space between each hole to hold one of those magnets. So the best way for me to do that here is first we'll draw a circle for the magnet diameter. That's actually pretty close, but And we'll draw a construction line from circle to circle. And I should be able to put this one on the midpoint of the line. And make the circles tangent to each other. And there, that pulls it together. So now that circle for the magnet is touching the circle for the holes. Now when I have circles of different sizes, I can't just put the circle on the center of that line because there's more line on the bigger circle and less line on the smaller circle. So I'm going to put this one coincident with that line, not centered, and then make them tangent. And let's not forget our magnet diameter. Now we're good. So we have holes with magnets in between them. Now we can copy that pattern all the way down. Let's make these equal so I don't have to enter that dimension every time. And then we'll need an extra magnet down at the bottom and another one at the top. Okay, so it's like getting a little cluttered here, but I've got two holes here, two holes here. So two holes for each size, and I actually have four of each size, but this will be mirrored in a little while here. And magnets between each one and on the top and bottom. Now I just need to give this thing an outside shape. So here I want to make sure that this outside edge doesn't get any closer to the hole. I want that consistent magnet size spacing here. So I've offset that circle and made the outside edge tangent to it. And we'll do the same thing up at the top. So I think we finally got something we can extrude from. And here we're going to extrude everything except for the holes, the through holes. Three millimeter extrude. Now let's go turn that sketch back on. And actually, let's change this extrude the other way. So my sketch is on top. 
and now we'll extrude the magnet holes down the magnet thickness parameter. Turn off that sketch, and we've got that all laid out. Now that we've got all that detail worked out, I could mirror this, but there's a bit more that I want to do here. Now if I set this thing down on a table, I don't want it to push all the dowel centers out. So I want to make this a little bit taller here than the, the base of each dowel center. So we're going to give it a little bit of height here on the edges. So we're going to create a sketch on the bottom and give this thing some legs, basically. That's better. All right, let's take this whole thing, create a mirror image of it, of this whole solid body. We've got two separate bodies here, so let's join them together. Here we go. Slots for each dowel center, all the magnets in between, a little bit of height on the bottom. It's looking pretty good. I'll probably want to hang this up on a tool board. So next I want to add something to the top here to hang it from. So we'll start by creating a sketch on the front plane and we'll draw something out here. So this area is a little odd looking. Let's roll this back, back in our timeline. Let's see, back before the fillets. There we go. Let's create a sketch in here. And extrude that up to the corner. There, that's better. Roll forward in the timeline. Now my fillets look better. But let's add one here just to smooth out that area. Step forward. There's our mirror operation. Joining them together and adding the hole at the top. That's looking a lot better on the back. And these channels here will give me room to reach my fingers under and push them out. So that's good. So I think I've got just about everything I need here. Let's add some fillets to make things look a little cleaner. Now I could model in the actual dowel centers themselves, but based on what I learned from the prototype, I know that as long as I have space in between for the magnets, I'll have enough space for everything to fit properly. So we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to go ahead and save this out to an STL. Bring this into my 3D printing slicing software. Place it on the print bed. Set up some settings for the actual print job. Preview it. All right, so there's our raft. There's the edges and the supports building up. And then all the way up to the holes. I think that should work out well. Save it out and send it to the printer. Thank you.